WIFO FM Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO. Brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yalmans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. FDIC Equal Housing Lender. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Do you know why most people don't invest outside work or at all? Because they don't know where to start and they don't know who to talk with. If this is you, give me a call. Hi, this is Shauna Quinn. I can help set up a plan no matter where you are in life to get you on a suitable path to a sound financial future. Give me a call, Shauna Quinn at 912-385-1000 or stop by the office at 212 South 1st Street right here in Jessup. That number again is 912-385-1000. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio. Bob, did you have a good weekend? I did. Good weekend. Did you participate in the tournament? Couldn't nope. get your team couldn't together? Get team in. Couldn't get a team in. It was sold out. Sold time got in. out. Yeah, but I did play Saturday. Had a good time. It was okay. hot. Oh, yeah. And you think it's been hot already. It's going to be triple digits most of this week. 96 today, 99 tomorrow. And then mm-hmm. 101 on uh, Wednesday, 101 on Thursday, 100 on Friday. We'll get back down to the 90s again until Saturday. And this is regular temperatures. This is not heat index. We will have heat index uh, today uh, with a high of 96. Heat index today is going to be over 100. It's going to be about 105 heat index. But today's regular temperature, high today near 96, Tuesday near 99, Wednesday near 101, Thursday sunny and hot here, 101, Friday right around 100. And then uh, 96 on Saturday. So this will definitely be the hottest week of the year. Mostly triple digits this week. Regular temperature. <laughs> Add heat index to that, and you just turn into a puddle when you walk outside. It's scorched. <laughs> it's scorching, baby. It's scorching. It's scorched so if you got something to do, you need to do it about sunrise on up to about 10, 11 o'clock and get your dog going behind out, out of that outside. <laughs> So it's going to be a very, very hot week. It, you know, it's it's temperatures are 100, but, you know, we're down here in the in the southeast, so not only do we have those high temperatures, we've got that humidity, which makes it seem even hotter, which makes it hotter, not seen, but makes it even hotter. I see a report here that Jaguar signed Evan Ingram to a $41.25 million deal. Yeah, tied in. He's yeah. tied in. It must be a good tied in. Keep part of their offense. Keep part of their offense? Yeah. So. They didn't want to lose him, so they signed him to a long-term deal. Okay. That just leaves three franchise tag players remaining who have not signed multi-year deals. So they signed them to a big old contract there. So yeah. that's good for the Jags to keep that talent right there 
down there in Jacksonville on the St. John's. If you're going to build a new stadium, you've got to have talented you players. Have talent. <laughs> you better have some talent if you're going to build a brand new stadium. Uh, they're still trying to work out where they're going to play those home games for the Jaguars. Is it going to, is it going to be in Gainesville at the University of Florida? Is it going to be at uh, in Daytona at the Daytona racetrack? Uh, that, that would be an interim. That would be a cool place to go watch you now. I think they ought to do that. What, but, Daytona? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be know. fun. Yeah. Be it seats about 100 some, and something yeah, thousand. Something, so. something different, you know. Yeah, some something unique, different. So. Yeah. So it'll be interesting where they're going to play those home games for the Jaguars during the two years they're building that stadium. When are they supposed to start? 25, somewhere along there? I think so. In two years, I think. A couple years from now, yeah. yeah. 25, they're supposed to start. And the, and the drawings of it just look absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, like it's going to be state-of-the-art, modern uh, stadium. Lord, I hope it has a roof to it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, should be a good year for the Jaguars. Like I said, Trevor Lawrence, another year under his belt. You got ATN that running back. Defense looks good. So, yeah, well, they won um, the division this past year. Got we'll got see a, if they can get got going. a good, good coach, winning coach, Doug Peterson. So, things are looking up for the Jaguars. You know, a lot of people picking them to win the division. So, okay. Tennessee just signed DeAndre Hopkins. He was deciding whether he was going to go to New England or Tennessee. So, he wound up in Tennessee. So, he's in the division. So, Surprised he didn't go to New England. And Belichick must not have that magic no more. Can't That's attract right. those good players. The, 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 the words on the street, Bob, that his, uh, he's on the hot seat this year. <laughs> 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 That's the word on the street, Bob. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But he's on the hot seat this week. That he the, might be encouraged to retire. The journalist who wrote that letter should have his journalism <laughs> license revoked. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've heard in my life. Bill Belichick. Well, he ain't no squad in five years one now. The, yeah, one of the winningest coaches in America. On the hey, it's not what yeah. for you did for me. It's in yeah. sports, you know, it's what not what you did for me yesterday. Is what are you doing for me today? I promise you, he's not on the. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they let him go, every team would be signing him tomorrow. You think because, so? Huh? Yeah. All right. Well. That's the biggest. Uh, I heard that this past week. He's on. I was like, <laughs> who, who, who in the world wrote that? Uh, well, you know, you, you got to create a little controversy uh, there if you're going to get controversy sales. I guess eyes and but ears on. on a story. I promise you, Bill. <laughs> that's that's laughable. <laughs> controversy and sales. Yeah. Guess those yeah. eyes and ears on something when you got that controversy going on. By things going along just fine, people don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little harder to win games with Mac Jones than it is with Tom Brady. That's well, the, that's you gotta have you, you gotta have crap come off the the pocketbook there. You know, you got you got to bring some talent in there. They've they've always kind of lipped along in talent yeah. because they had Brady there. Now they can't do that. They got they got to put some horses out there. That's the bigger story. The bigger story is that the Kraft, apparently the Kraft family's in love with Mac Jones, and Belichick's not in love with Mac Jones. So oh, that's that's the big that's issue. the problem there. Huh? That's the issue. Well, my, my money's on the owners. <laughs> well, this owner lets the coach coach, so. Uh, we'll see what happens I mean, there. I think he's not like Jerry Jones. that He's involved in everything. Right, right. I mean, he's smart enough to realize he's got one of the best coaches, and he just well, lets the coaches coach. So. A player several years ago that Kraft really loved, but Belichick made him going out. I can't remember who that player was, but it was, I mean, somebody that Kraft just really, Tebow, I think it was, wasn't it? It was someone. No, it wasn't Tebow. Tebow. It was someone else that, that he really, really liked. He liked Wes Welker a lot. So. And, uh, but uh, yeah, Belichick Wes said, nah, yeah. nah, nah, I don't think so. Football's right around the corner. Training camp's about to open up. So yeah, college football will be here before you know it. So SEC media days this week in Nashville. That'll be fun to watch. So This week, huh? This week. Okay, yeah. SEC media day. Yeah, hopefully there won't be any big – Controversy this year between Nick Saban and oh, what's his face there well, at Texas A&M. Where, I saw where we mentioned last week Kirby had that so-called call press conference to address the speeding issues and everything else before he hit to Nashville. So mm-hmm. hoping, he, hoping he squashed all that. Yeah. So have to put governors you know, on yeah, those uh, it'll be interesting. kids' cars. <laughs> be interesting to see what kind of questions he gets bombarded with. So, but Georgia looking for the three peat. So should be fun. Okay. And the NASCAR race in New Hampshire got rained out rained yesterday. They've had a yeah. lot of rain lately for their, their races. The last this is three in a row that's been either been shortened or canceled. So they'll they'll 
They'll throw the green flag today at 12.05 on the USA Network. That's on NASCAR Radio. So um, NASCAR will run today in New Hampshire starting at 12.05. Getting ready for, I think they're down the last five or six races before the playoffs begin. People trying to jockey to get in there. So we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, out of the last two races, you know, we're, we're rain shortened. And yesterday's rained out. And the earth shattering news the Braves lost a series. I know. The first to the time. White Sox. The it wasn't like, you know, to somebody who was good. I mean, White Sox, I mean, it's like when they lost out there to Oakland, you know? Yeah. What do you mean losing to Oakland? What do you mean losing to the White Sox? White Sox hadn't had a good year yeah. this year. You know, when they won Friday, I said, well, good. They don't have that, uh, you know, all star hangover there, you know, uh-huh. with so many players going out there. But then they all Saturday and Sunday, what is going on, guys? All right, well, they have off today and be back in action tomorrow. Arizona comes to town. Arizona comes to town beginning tomorrow. We'll have those games for you right here on 105.5 FM. It was surprising. They lost two out of three, but they got whipped yesterday. I mean, whipped just slapped all over the place, man. Just bap, 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 bap. Wasn't a good game. Sorry. And the the, uh, Wednesday game, the the Thursday game, the Thursday game, the Thursday game against um, Arizona is a midday game. Can you imagine sitting in Truist Park at 12.20 on when, on Thursday? It's supposed to be 101 here on Thursday. I don't know what it's going to be in Atlanta, probably 95, 96, usually about five degrees cooler up there. But you're shaking and baking up there inside Truist Park, midday game up there. I mean, you're, you're sweating bullets. <laughs> yeah. They got great ice cream, though. <laughs> yeah. awesome. By the time you get it down the aisle to sit down, it's just going to be blob. <laughs> That was ice cream when I had it two minutes ago. <laughs> oh, jeez. And, of course, beer just makes you sweat more, so you better yeah. just drink water and Gatorade or some sports drink they have up there. Knowing them, they probably have the Powerade through the Coca-Cola, you know. I hope you're in the shelter so, you, you know, the sun's not on you. So. Some, yeah. some of those seats. Are some of the seats are sheltered, but, you know, this is a midday game, so that, that sun's going to be straight up in the sky. It'll be hot. Ooh, man, you couldn't pay me to sit out there unless it was a lot. <laughs> There'd be pat people passing out there. Jason Aldean had to, uh, to uh, uh, walk away from his concert Saturday up north somewhere because of uh, heat exhaustion. He just said right in the middle of a song, he just had to, to walk off stage and go backstage because his voice was starting to go and so uh-huh. forth like that. And I guess he felt himself getting dizzy. And last thing he wanted to do is to have video of you passing out on the stage as a star. Uh-huh. So he just walked off the stage. And so they're going to reschedule that. But, uh, I mean, not near as hot up there as it is down here. And he had to walk off the stage from heat exhaustion. I said, that is something to be, you know, be careful with because, like I said, it is, it's real. That sun can – Jump on you before you know it. So. Oh, yeah. You don't know what's coming. It just kind of sneaks up on you. Yeah, stay, You think yeah. you're doing just fine. Next thing you know, uh, you find yourself lying on the ground. When they say stay hydrated, they're not joking. So yep. drink plenty of water. Yep. Uh, for these uh, football players and other folks out there, you know, are starting now or an hour ago and get through by, you know, 11 o'clock. Because oh, right. you, can't, you, can't, you can't do it when the temperature's, you know, in the mid to upper 90s. You know, over 100. And when the temperature's in the 100s, you just, you can't do it. You got to do it in the mornings. Get in the morning practices and then get in the rest up a little bit and get in the weight room in the afternoon where it's air conditioned. What in the world would we do without air conditioning, Bob? I don't know. But I remember growing up without it. I, I remember, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it was this hot. Though. When, when I, don't I, I don't remember when temperatures. When I went to Wayne County High School from 1968 to 72, the only places that were air conditioned were the, were the offices up front and the Votech building. But the other three halls were not air conditioned at all. Um, My first car didn't have air conditioning. But you remember temperatures in the hundreds though back then? I don't. I just remember temperatures. It being was hot. High. I mean, I had a I had a '69 Camaro, those vinyl seats, and during the summertime period, I pulled my shirt up and just stick to that back vinyl seat and the, and so forth. Luckily, my second car, a Datsun V210, had air conditioning. But my first car didn't have air conditioning. And um, uh, but today, I mean, the, the South, most of the country just you could not survive without air conditioning. I mean, you know, we couldn't have all this electronic equipment running without air conditioning. It would just heat up and stop working. And so it's a good thing we got air conditioning, Bob. You know, I, and there's there's some folks around that uh, have homes up north uh, during the uh, summer and come back down here 
during the winter. And boy, that would be nice. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, but it's still it's it's hot all over the country. They got record temperatures out west, record temperatures in Death Valley. Temperatures are like in Phoenix of like 120 and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, just but it's a dry heat. <laughs> yeah, right. It's still 100. <laughs> Yeah, we're just baking it in in uh, in uh, Europe's having the same thing. You know, a lot of places are not used to this type of heat, so they don't. A lot of folks don't have air conditioning. You know, when you're up in the northwest or up in the northeast area, they don't have air conditioning, and they're 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 suffering. Yeah, luckily we got you know full fledged down here, and. Um, so, all right, um, um, this Jessup City Council meetings tomorrow night. In a, is it a regular schedule meeting? I believe it's regular scheduled Regular scheduled meeting for the Jessup City Council tomorrow night. They've got uh, different things they're looking at. They're looking at maybe perhaps maybe getting some new patrol cars for the, uh, for the city. Is that Four right? Four new Dodge Chargers on the agenda for the police department. But the interesting item is the executive session for personnel. So be interested to see what that's about. That's on the agenda. They got other items on the agenda for Jessup City Council tomorrow night, right? Yeah, but that's the interesting thing. Ah, that's item. an interesting thing, but what's the other things? Request to purchase, like I said, the 40 Dodge Chargers, the June financial report, South Palm Street subdivision preliminary plat, and the recreational trails grant program. Okay, and no talk about trying to vote on a new county uh, no, city commissioner, right? No commissioner. That's a dead issue? Five. It seems like I think it's a dead issue with the commissioners. You know, the question is, is the governor going to get involved? That everything I hear from Atlanta, I don't think he's getting involved. So. He can't get involved. It doesn't look like he's going to get involved. Is that right? He can't get involved if he wants to. But well, I, mean, I mean, he he doesn't want to get involved. Is that yeah, correct? I don't think he wants to get involved. You don't think so? I don't okay. think he wants to touch with the ten foot pole. But that's okay. just me. But that just why you? would he? Why would he want to get involved? I don't know. About it's a mess. Couldn't tell you. It's the city's a mess. Not unless he's required to. That's the question. Is he required to? That's what they're checking into. The city says he's, you know, after they can't make a decision in 45 days, it goes to the governor's appointment. But talking to the governor's press secretary, they don't seem to agree. So they've got their legal team checking into that. Okay. Got the legal team, got the whole team looking into that, huh? Yeah. I'm sure they got <laughs> expensive lawyers up there in line. <laughs> Probably be a good, got the team. Got that's, the team that's, that's, probably, that's probably a good gig being a lawyer for the governor. <laughs> probably pays well. Someone texted in the Braves need some pitchers. I thought the Braves had good pitchers. I mean, they've been. I mean, they got the best record in the national or American they're, and national. They're their two best pitchers still on the shelf. They're coming back. So. They're coming back. Yeah, well, they've nice. been they've been injured a little bit. Yeah, they've been IR. I mean, they right. haven't been able to pitch. All right, so the two two best pitchers been on the IR. Okay, yeah, they're gonna be fine. Okay, let me read this right here from the mayor of Scriven, Jason Weaver, who had a birthday yesterday. Yeah, a happy belated birthday. Yes, sir, he had a birthday yesterday. Let's see what this says here. It says, we, okay, we just want to thank everyone for all the prayers and support during our Independence Day Festival in Scriven and during the time I've been sick and down. My family and I appreciate everyone in this county more than you can imagine. I'm on the men now. Thank you so much, Mayor Scriven, Jason Weaver. Okay. We had a few folks who sent in his birthday this morning. Had a couple on Friday who sent it in for Sunday, but then had a few this morning who sent it in for yesterday. And uh, so happy belated birthday there, Mayor Weaver. And glad you're on the mend. We had him on the show not long ago, didn't we? I guess he was before, the, before the 4th of July. Yeah, before the 4th of yeah. July thing. Yeah. It was after the 4th of July he had the health scare. Oh, like so. after the 4th of July yeah. thing. I didn't know right. that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I didn't he spent hear that. He spent a few days in the hospital, stopped by to see him. They were going to possibly have to do some surgery, but I think the surgery was avoided, so oh, okay. that's well, why good. I say he's back on the men. Good. So. back on the men. All yeah. right. Okay. He's doing well. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, we got the Jessup City Council meeting uh, tomorrow night. Anything else going on this week that you're keeping an eye on? Either council I meetings or I don't think there's, or anything? I don't think there's any other meetings. Court's coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. They've got another preliminary hearing on that John Yon Kosky case. So I think it's the 24th of July. So we'll be on hand for that. Okay. So talk to the assistant or the DA, assistant DA on Friday. Get an update on that. So. 
But no, disappointed Friday went by City Hall, tried to get Rose to come on the pitch and bob show, but she declined. So that could tried be to get any legal reasons for that. She declined as well. Yeah, could be legal reasons for that. Reached out to several commissioners. They thought about it, but they declined as well. So, so all the city, com- the com- city commissioners you asked, the ones, the ones I got you in touch with, yeah. Right. yeah, well, it's a pretty hot subject right now. They want to stay off that hot tater. So we'll see what happens with that. Just want to make sure, I just want to make sure everybody knows they're they're welcome. Yeah, they're time welcome. Time they were invited. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. they were in, invited. Can't, can't drag them in here. No, no, you can't drag them in here. And of course, there's you know, you, you know it is a very touchy situation. You start talking about personnel when you're actually. Involved in management or a council person for a particular that would be fun if we drive me. We know the sheriff well; he can go grab, you know, <laughs> pick him up, handcuff him, bring him in for the interview. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, that would be good. I'll say Chuck Mosley can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Bob. <laughs> yeah, right, Bob. <laughs> you know, you can try. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> <laughs> On her task. <laughs> Oh boy, jeez! Oh, we got Arf wanting to be on the Butch and Bob show this coming Wednesday. Yes, you can be on. I think Wednesday. I don't know. I have to check and see, but I'll call him back. Susan Groover with Arf wants to know if they could be on the Butch and Bob show. I'm sure, we can fit them in. Yeah, yeah. we can come on. We haven't got anything set up that would take an entire right. show. Even if we do have something right. set up, I think Wednesday and Friday we have set up right now. But still, they can still come in because very few shows that we have somebody that lasts more than 10 or 15 minutes ever so often we will have one and we'll write it down there for a full show but i know the touchdown club's coming friday friday yeah john McWayne and someone else is coming i yeah. think it's bill but anyway they want to talk about that barbecue kickoff and about all that's going on with the touchdown club and when the first meeting will be and all that good stuff so touchdown club set to get ready for another high school football season which is a lot of excitement building for that excitement um, Okay. It'll be two weeks from this Friday from the scrimmage. So, but like I said, hopefully they'll be careful this week out there at practice because that's going to be tough for those. Oh, you'll have to get through before, dude. Even before the baby, yeah, you just practice several hours in the morning and get then hit the weight room in the afternoon. I would think. I, I don't know. I don't know what the protocols are. So I'm just I'm just thinking, which is, could be dangerous sometimes. All right. Anything else going on, Bob? Not that I knew. Like I said, it was a busy weekend for sports. Congrats to you know all those swimmers that did well. Yeah, the promise. softball team out in Gulf Shores. You know, Rodney Madry and the Cage do a great job out there. They've got all those teams, but one of those teams won, and six of those girls are on the Wayne County girls softball team as well. So the softball team is looking for a big season. So a lot of talent on that softball team. So, but congrats to. Rodney in the cage and the coaches and players that won that tournament out there at Gulf Shores, Alabama, beat the Oklahoma Bombers, nine to one. Oklahoma Bombers. Huh? There are teams from all over the country out there. So, but they okay. said it was a fun tournament. Girls right. had a good time out there. But congrats to the cage team for winning that national championship. Isn't that something? Congratulations to them, and then congratulations to the Piranha Swimmers who uh, got gold medals. And we've had one people who uh, you know placed and showed, and we'll have those results tomorrow. And so congratulations to Piranhas also. All right, Bob. Well, that's it. Okay. Have a good day. World famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup has been brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates.